so I'm gonna start by talking a little bit about books I have chosen um, they're all by women for some reason I went through my shelves I was I realized that I was partial to uh, women writers which is actually I guess not that surprising and also not just for some reason I have a different bias towards female writers whether that's classics or whether that's contemporary um, and I found myself seeking them out more than um, their male counterparts so um, I'm going to talk a little bit about them. I've got books from, from England, from America, and from Japan. Um, and these are not just classics that I love. These are also things that you either may not have heard of, or you haven't read for a long time and you want to revisit. So um, I'm going to go ahead and start. first book for my pick is The Bell Jar by Sylvia Plath, which is this amazing story also really depressing about a young woman uh, who is a bit trigger warning suicidal and uh, she has a bit of a breakdown and it's just about her life and how she has a breakdown and it's, I'm not making it sound very exciting but the way Sylvia Plath has written this, you know Sylvia Plath is a poet and the way she's written this novel it feels almost like she's taken the words right out of your own head and played with your brain and laid it out like a crossword puzzle so you know what you're thinking when you're reading this as well. I read this first when I was a very serious young person and it is one of the books that has had a major impact on my own writing. So it has to be on this. It also kind of inspired a tattoo that I want. Um, she, she's talking about, she listens to the familiar brag of her heart. I am, I am, I am. And I wanted to get a tattoo out of my own heart saying I am, I am, I am. But I'm a little chicken to get a tattoo. I mean, I have one, but I was very young then. And I don't think I might get any more now. But oh uh, yeah. So Sylvia Plath, great author. A little bit depressing and existential, but Someone you have to read if you haven't read already. And also that to inspire. Next book is from Japan. And it's maybe one of the oldest uh, published books in the world. It's by a court gentlewoman called Sai Shona... Shonagon. Yeah, Shonagon. She was a courtier in the Japanese court. And um, way back 966. And uh, she kept this little pile of papers next to her pillow which is why it's called the pillow book and uh, she wrote down little observations about her life so there's no set narrative as such but it is a, a really good book in the sense that it gives you an idea of, a, of the inner life of a woman it's like reading a diary of a world that you would otherwise not be party to which is uh, Japanese courtiers and all that and there's also I mean it's laid out really interestingly so there's stuff like um, things that give you a nice feeling, things that prove disillusioning. I'll just read a bit from here. Nothing in all the world could be worse than a man or woman who turns out to use words vulgarly. I wonder what the strange quality is in the single world that can make it vulgar or tasteful. Though, of course, the person making this judgment isn't necessarily so very splendid herself. It's very unseemly for a man who's visiting a gentlewoman to eat while with her. I mean, Sai had some old-fashioned ideas, but she's also long dead. And this book is very old. And it's definitely worth reading. You're going to like bookmark it all over the place like I have. Up next, a book that I reread a lot. A Tree Grows in Brooklyn by Betty Smith. You might think when you first pick it up that it is about a young girl and it's like YA and you're dismissing it. And although you should never dismiss YA, it's my favorite genres. But it does, it's actually about a girl in New York during the Great Depression, which as we know, part two is coming to us right now. And... Uh, her family, her father's an alcoholic, her mother works very hard, she has a brother. And it's just about her life in Brooklyn. It's, it's, it's a small, steady story. And you get absorbed in Francie's life. Because Francie's looking for beauty, even in the small tenement house that she lives in, which is also where the tree comes from. She finds the tree and she's like, oh look, there's a tree growing in Brooklyn, so I guess I can grow in Brooklyn as well. It's really good. And it's, it's very mesmerizing. And it's a book I revisit at least once a year. Worth a read. I mean, they're all worth a read, but you know. If you ask me to pick, don't ask me to pick. Next, I've got The Color Purple, which is not a classic in the sense that these are. It was published a little later. It was published in the 80s. Um, it is a, it's a, by Alice Walker. Some of you may have seen the movie. It won a Pulitzer Prize. And it is about um, a black woman who is married and her husband has another lover, a woman who also comes into her life. And when this woman comes into Celie's life, she finds her own life changing. So far, she's accepted all the abuse and the troubles that life has thrown at her. But with the arrival of Shug, a blues singer, Celie can see her own world a little differently as well. 
and it's amazing to watch this person climb out of the hardship that she describes early in the book and it's all torn for a person and find joy i think a lot of these books are about finding joy wherever you are i think that is why i have also picked them because i think what we need right now in this world and whatever's going on right now is hope and these are books that will give you hope they begin with despair they have some despair bits in the middle but ultimately i think they all have hope and finally i'm going to toss in one regular classic in there just because i feel like i've been feeling very drawn to it recently this is jane eyre this is my really ancient edition of jane eyre when i was 8 years old i borrowed an abridged version of this book from my friend in the school bus and i was so fascinated by it i read like all the way i mean it was like super abridged right it was meant for kids and i ran home to my mother oh my god i found the most amazing book it's like what it's like it's called jane eyre and she said really you're in jane eyre okay and i borrowed it so many times from that girl my mother finally bought me my own version when i was not not very much older maybe about 12 or 13 and i read over and over again until i realized it was a classic i mean i actually learned it in college and stuff and somehow jane eyre has never lost that that first love first rush of discovery for me what did i like so much about everything the gothicness uh the mysterious woman in the attic what is he hiding mr rochester jane herself overcoming so many hardships to get to where she is uh true love conquering all i guess i mean this book has everything from wicked aunts and you know dying school friends spoiler alert to uh romantic men and winds in the moors and mysterious noises coming from the houses above so read it um that's all i've got for you thanks for watching and um you can also check out my instagram channel i guess um which is at minna reads for more bookish recommendations bye